we will move on to our next paper and uh, move from uh, several thousand uh, kilometers uh, with a paper by uh, Cecilia Pires, uh, the transposition of the musical landscape of the Brazilian Sertão, and I'm sure uh, to the urban environment through armorial music, and I'm sure my pronunciation uh, is going to be corrected in a, in a few minutes by Cecilia. Um, she is a doctoral student in history, music, and social sciences at the Ecole des Études en Sciences Sociales, the OHSS. Uh, she studies the creation of a musical identity in the northeast of Brazil during the Brazilian military dictatorship through armorial music invented by the writer Ariano Suassuna. She is the director of the Association of Brazilian Researchers in France and secretary of the Associ Association for Research on Brazil in Europe. Um, Cecilia, over to you for 20 minutes of presentation of your paper. Thank you and good afternoon. I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present my research in this very interesting conference. In this work, we will talk about the music that is part of the Armoria movement invented by the writer Ariano Suassuna, inspired by the sounds of the Sertão a rural area of the of north, northeast brazil brazilian cultural manifestation like no in this, acad, in this academic field i think it's necessary to make a small geographic introduction to understanding this topic better first i will show you uh, the map of brazil with a highlight in the northeast region brazil is divided into five regions and 25, 27 states. In this work, I will talk about cultural aspects and manifestations of the Northeast region that has, as I show on the map, nine states. The Northeast region is divided into, into four subdivisions, also called natural subdivisions because they concern climate, vegetation, and relief. As you can see here, following the number of the image, one is the middle north, Meio Norte, which makes, makes transitions with uh, the Amazon. Two is Sertão, arid, very dry, and significant part of the northeast. And three, Agreste, Agreste a transition that uh, with many plains make a natural obstacle to arrival of rains in the Sertão, and for Zona da Mata, uh, which also includes a part of the coast, more urban area. As far as the state of Pernambuco is concerned, the urban area is practically only present in the capital, Recife, and in the, its metropolitan region. The other part is considered a rural area, Sertão and Agreste. We see uh, that the state of Pernambuco, more specifically, was, has more than 50% of its territory in the Sertão, that is in the rural area. One of the particularities of this region is to have an almost identitarian movement at the end of the 1920s, spearheaded by the sociologist Gilberto Freire. This movement, called regionalism, regionalism, had a very important manifest for the study of sociology in Brazil. Sorry. <laughs> in this work, I'm not going to go into great detail on this matter, but I mentioned it as something to keep in mind in the course of the study in order to understand why the region stand out more than the state itself and how the region can get a sociological aspect that are key to the understanding of the cultural manifestations that exist in this region. Besides Gilberto Freire's study, study, I will draw upon the text the invention of the Northeast, a invenção do Nordeste, by the sociologist Duval Moniz de Albuquerque Jr. as a theoretical support. I would like to point out that regionalism helped bring about developments in the field of literature in the 1930s. The literature that emerged as a result of regionalism 
was referred to as Romance de Trinta, novel of the third. This, this cultural literary phase was very important for the development and creation of this Northeastern identity. identity. This the literary, literary aspect we be treated here as another important element for the conception of the armorial aesthetic. The novelists also differentiate themselves from the area of the Nordis that they take as a reference to think about the region. For some others, the Sertão is the traditional space par excellence and the one that gives originality to the Northeast. In his book, Duval Morniz also says that this novelist invented a traditional Nordis. But it does not mean that they start for nothing. It means that they choose between memories, experience, image, facts, tools uh, that they consider it characteristic of this region. The Northeast being the place of conservation of an, an identity that was threatened with being lost. The literature of this period, called the novel of 30, is considered truly Brazilian literature because it is linked to the region, linked to the, the region that suffered the least foreign influence. Ariano Suassuna, the creator of the Armorial Movement, Movimento Armorial, was a northeastern writer whose main influence uh, was seen in the development of the novel of third. And in this dissemination of Freire concepts of regionalism. I don't wish to argue that the music of the armorial movement is the only expression that shows the tra transpositions from rural to urban. There are many others, but in the field of the classical music, the armorial music developed in the 1970s, risks these traditional elements in classical compositions creating an identity that was still absent in Brazilian classical music. In popular music expressions, Northeastern themes have always been highly represented, thanks in part to the singer Luiz Gonzaga in the 1940s. Gonzaga helped promote the movement of regionalism, founded by the sociologist Freire making identitary representation a major theme, theme of future artistic manifestations. According to sociologist Duval Muniz, the construction of the identity and musical aesthetics of the Northeast region was first relighted by the singer Luis Gonzaga in the 90s. Gonzaga music, music by Young came to be throwed off as a representative of this region identity. It became the music of the Northeast, Musica do Nordeste, because it was the first one that spoke and sang on behalf of this region in the south of the country. Gonzaga was the artist who instituted the Northeast as a space of saudade, nostalgia, not a nostalgia for difficult times, but the northeast of the Sertão, of his land in his place, making the northeastern culture a culture of memory of the past. Over time, this identity was being reappropriated and reworked by various expressions, including the armorial movement. As mentioned in my introductions, in my introduction, the Armorial Movement was created by the writer and playwright Ariano Suassuna in Recife, capital of Pernambuco, in the 1970s, during the period of the Brazilian military dictatorship. And this movement saw itself as a regional cultural manifestation and wanted to show power or a powerful idea that would lead them to universal identification. Suassuna said in the late 90s, 1906, I make originality a very different concept from today's, trying to create a traditional and popular style capable of welcome as many histories 
myths, characters, and events as possible in order to reach the traditional and universal spirit through what I can perceive in my region. Many artists joined the armorial movement. It is perhaps the only Brazilian movement that has tried to create a language in a variety of artistic fields. Literature, music, painting, engraving, tapestry, theater, dance, ceramics. All these arts have in common elements that remind us of uh, characterize the sertão. These elements were represented through the materials used, manual arts, technique, techniques, predominant colors, language, vocabulary, musical instruments, sounds. And these elements were responsible for bringing the landscape of the sertão to this artistic, artistic movement created in the state capital. The objective of this movement was to create an aesthetic in order to show an erudite cultural identity of popular origin in the Brazilian North, Northeast. To this end, it used the popular culture of the Sertão as its main source, since it was still considered distant and therefore more authentic than other cultures, as mentioned before. Ariano Suassuna identifies the armorial movement with certain characteristics of the European Middle Ages, such as, me, as med, medieval fiefdoms and castles, where noble, noble families were distinguished by the, by the course of arms. The name given to the movement, armorial, armorial suggests the desire to establish a link, and even imaginary, with the erotic roots of Iberian origins uh, that arrived, arrived in Brazil. Suassuna used the elements of an Iberian culture as in, he represented one of the oldest roots in Brazil. And in order to build this new aesthetic, it was necessary in his view to highlight this tradition. We can see in this way that uh, there was a kind of aesthetic and cultural anachronism in the discourse of the movement, because in Brazil there was no Middle Ages. And however, we are certainly aware that this was an ambition, invention. We can add that the idea of Suassuna and that of the sociologist Duval Muniz is in line with Eric Hobsbawm study on the invention of traditions. This concept is here understood as practices invented by an individual or a collective with the aim of imposing values and behaviors that imply an artificial continuity with respect to a mystified historical past. Ariano resorts to an Im imaginary and idealized past bringing once again elements of the novel of the third that was also part of the regionalist aesthetic. This movement was presented as a paradigmatic example of a tradition of soul in which popular cultures are the foundation of national identity. It is important to observe that the armorial movement includes a var var variety of artistic manifest manifestations, but all, uh, of all the arts, music is the one that has developed the most and archived the great local and national impact. This music provides a um, synthesis between classical and popular music. In 1970, Ariane Suassuna, with the artists and composers, of the armorial tried to show a new music from the Northeast, this time an instrumental music of erudite character. This music emerged in an artistic movement based on the rural cultural traditional tradition of the Northeast, representing a particular Suassuna universe that shared some of Luis Gonzaga principles, but with a less popular way of uh, presenting the music played by Gonzaga 
was more a song to dance in Paris, a song play at the dances in Sao Paulo, frequented by these immigrants. His music was played in the same way as in the rural area. The accordion as the main instrument accompanied by percussion instruments like the pandeiro, zabumba, and the triangle. Adopting a popular dimension, uh, Luis Gonzaga's music uses a nostalgic poetry that comes directly from the childhood memories of the Nordist immigrant. Due to this feeling transmitted through the lyrics of the song, the singer's success has been remarkably far from his homeland. However, in Armorial, to create instrumental music of a classical nature, it was necessary to seek other means of significations with this same original culture. In instrumental music, we do not have the possibility to resort the, to the spoken word. The connection with our original character comes, first of all, through the instrumentation used use it and the sound sought after. The use of traditional instruments in armorial music had not only a sound, a sound purpose, but also a visual one. On the one hand, the instruments made it possible to approach the sound of popular music. On the other hand, it also had the visual element. The use of instruments such as the Northeast viola, uh, Rabecas, Pífanos, and Marimbal de Lata characterized both the sound of the groups of the performance on stage, while referring to this music to its regional reference. In addition to instrumental performance, Suasuna sought to connect with the regional and rural through its own aesthetic concept, using, for example, the writings of Cordell literature. The poetry of the singers and the northeastern viola for music creation. Um, this photo shows the formation of the armorial quintet, which was the most representative since uh, 1972. The flute and violin are the only variable instrument of this group. Sometimes the original sound was so sometimes an imitation of this sound. Uh, then the sound of the Northeastern flute was represented both the uh, pifano, an original instrument is in rural areas, and by the tra transversal flute. The violin, on the other hand, sought to imitate the, the sound of the rabeca, or the rabeca itself or was used depending on the compositions. In the armorial orchestra, there is no instrumental variation. The violins and flutes are used um, as an improved version of traditional instruments, valuing above all the tuning of standard instruments in orchestras. We are going to hear the armorial music, Bendito, of armorial quintet. So to conclude, I would like to say uh, that talking about a Northeastern soundscape may seem obvious because of everything I presented regarding regionalism and the way the region presents itself through the arts. Nevertheless, it is a field that had, has not received a great deal of critical attention. 
I rem remember uh, talking about it when I was doing my bachelor degree in musicology in Brazil, but it was just something interesting. But studies on the subject are very scarce. It seems that uh, these representations and soundscape, soundscapes have become almost necessary to explain and talk about the music of the Nordists. And this is something I have become more conscious of since I moved, I moved to France. Unfortunately, I don't have time to analyze in, the music, in this music every relevant except for this research. This will be anal analyzed soon in my thesis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Um, um, oops, that's, you were bang on time. Um, that was the alarm to uh, sound the end. Um, a question, so I'm reading the questions we have from Amanda especially, and also another one uh, from me as someone who's really, uh, doesn't know much, if anything, about uh, Brazil. Um, so you mentioned how that was uh, um, invented in the 1970s, uh, I mean, created or, or launched in the 1970s at a time where uh, Brazil is headed by a, a military dictatorship. And uh, you mentioned how it's all about the recreation of the mythif mythified, idealized uh, past. Uh, uh, so it's kind of a, a promotion of regionalism and from a European point of view, it's a lot of red lights when you when you link regionalism, mythified past, and uh, uh, and uh, military dictatorship or a suspension of of uh, whatever democracy. Um, so I was wondering the, about the relationship uh, between Ariano Suassuna and the government at the time, and how it was how that new folk was perceived. And it's also, I add, I mix this question with uh, Amanda uh, uh, when uh, she asks how that is related to Brazilian racial politics, uh, how it plays out uh, with our Moya music. So I can start for the end. Sure. And the, the, the themes, uh, the theme, uh, political themes, the racial and gen gender, is not a, a thing. The is not a debate uh, in this time with Ariane Suassuna because for he is um, something. Uh, the harmonium music is something uh, regional, so it's something also oh, um, deja already already already. Um, um, uh, pre pre preview. preview, but it's not that it's a uh, peripheric. Yeah. So it's a, a subject all, uh, already peripheric. So it's not a um, um, subject to to talk about race because mm -hmm. the race included the race in the the regional or the northeast re race. If you, if I speak like that, because the Nordics is already a um, problem uh, separate for the rest of the Brazil. So race, gender, and uh, region region is a problem, but uh, not specifically um, race, uh, racism, and um, and gender. And for the political. If I understand, it's um, in the moment, uh, Ariano Suassun, it was uh, uh, someone uh, very, very important in, in, the, in this literature, in the, uh, in the movement, uh, cultural movement, and cultural and literary, but uh, He's, he was um, every, every, every time and this is dislocado. I have a, tradu a tra traduction. <laughs> dislocado. 
So uh, it's separated, separated, yeah. separated the the political, the the, the Thames political Thames. Um, but he is um, a political writer. Mm -hmm. So it's a political writer, another uh, um, some, some political <laughs> uh, mm? without political presence. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I mean, uh, we can always follow up uh, later on. I've, I've got other questions about uh, especially musical instruments and uh, music techniques. Um, so on Facebook, uh, Joao Silva asks that um, the harpsichord and uh, is very present and also baroque techniques are used. Uh, why do you think these instruments and techniques were used? And there's also a question from Paola. Uh, she asks, what's the importance of the guitar in, in this uh, music genre? In the I, uh, Paula, this um, importance of the guitar in Armorian in Armorian music mm -hmm. is um, the the importance is with the uh, the singers with the Nordis. So the, the instrument it was uh, I show. The instrument uh, viola nordestina is the most important instrument in this region. So the Armorial music explore, explore, explore this instrument. So it's the, the the most important to this music. The the flute and the uh, guitar, but it's the guitar uh, with twelve strings. So it's a uh, sound different. And for the instruments, the baroque, baroque techniques, it's um, it's um, something. Um, so maybe I can answer <laughs> that because I think it's uh, baroque technique. It's more the discourse. I think it's a discourse, the the approach of the Baroque music, but it's not. It's the the music uh, modal music, so it's different. And uh, Baroque techniques, it's uh, something. It's the counterpoint. Con, con, mm, it's yeah. the, the yes, it's the use the counterpoint and. The, um, the formation uh, by the orchestra, so it's the formation, instrumental formation, and uh, the instruments, the valorization of the violin, and the director of the orchestra, it's uh, someone, it's like the music, baroque, baroque music, and it's the overture of the movement, it's um, with the baroque uh, music. So it's must the something um, the pleasure or the approach than the techniques vary the techniques. So. Mm -hmm. And a, and a last a last question before uh, before we wrap up. Um, so you mentioned how it was uh, invented as a form a genre for Brazil. Uh, so obviously looking kind of at the country itself. But I'm wondering if it had an international uh, uh, um, uh, influence. If, for instance, if Brazilian communities in other countries in the world uh, uh, listen to Amoya music as a way to, as a way of nostalgia, as a way to remember the, the the country they left, or is it something that sort of was remained uh, very much limited to the 70s or 80s in Brazil, or is it something that actually came to represent some form of, of Brazilian identity? Uh, throughout time and space, um, the Armorial music it's it's, um, it's not um, but in the in the time in 1970. It's um, the orchestra and quintet. It's around the Brazil, but now it's something um, very exotic. <laughs> 
Okay. So, so it's continue exotic. It's not uh, that uh, try, uh, the music, sound, mu sound music of the films with representing nor the area, the northeast. So is util uh, is using the armorial music, but it's mm -hmm. not uh, not something to listen in Brazil like that. Okay. Like, like samba, like a music of uh, Caetano Veloso, mm -hmm. Beto Gil, for example, it's the same time with tropicalism. So it's different, M more, uh, less popular. All right. Um, well, thank you very much for your paper, for your research, uh, Cecilia and